October is halfway over, and usually footwear brands wait to release their crazy heat till the end of the month, and it seems like that's still happening here in October 2022 because we've got some crazy sneaker releases. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler, and this is Sit or Sell. Have you guys seen the latest Soul Premise bags, the Monogram series? They look absolutely insane and feel very premium, especially for the price. First of all, I want to give a huge thank you to Soul Premise for being such a longtime supporter of the channel. And second of all, I want to show you one of my favorite new bags. So obviously, I love Soul Premise's new Monogram design. It looks really great in this black color, especially accented by these gold hits on the front of the bag and of course on the zippers. It looks super clean. But not only that, this bag is super functional because in the front of the bag, I can hold two whole pairs of sneakers and in the back of the bag, I can hold my laptop laptop, some cables, and even throw some clothes in there. It's a pretty amazing bag. And this is just one of their smaller backpacks. They have tons of other bags available. They have duffel bags and really big backpacks, which I show off a lot on this channel because I use that bag a bunch as well. And they come in a ton of different colors, like green camo, which looks amazing. And of course, Soul Premise bags are TSA approved, which means you can bring them onto the airplane with you, store them in the overhead compartment or underneath your seat, rather than having to check them underneath the plane, which makes traveling a lot faster and keeps your stuff a lot safer. But with all that being said, if you guys wanna check out Soul Premise for yourself, which I absolutely recommend. Make sure to click that link in the top of the description below and use my code SETH for 40% off your entire order. Jumping right into it, on October 19th, we've got the Air Jordan 9 Boot NRG in black and gum. According to Jordan brand, this is a winterized Air Jordan 9 that comes in a rugged black upper and a gum outsole. The upper comes in a durable leather and suede with a waterproof coating, and then apparently the eyelets of the shoe come in metal, which make it better overall, I guess, and more durable, I'm not exactly sure. And then the final feature that makes this more of a winterized boot is the extra traction on the outsole. It feels like Jordan brand has been winterizing their classic Air Jordan models for years, and every year that I see one of these shoes sitting in store, I'm like, eh. I'd rather wear a pair of Tims, and I feel like most people feel that way. I understand that some people do want a winterized version of their Jordan sneakers. I get it, but I don't think it's that many people, and I'm surprised that every year, Jordan brand just keeps re-releasing Jordan 9 winterized, or Jordan 4 winterized, and it just doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense, but they must be selling models because they wouldn't keep doing it if they weren't. However, unlike their classic models and classic versions of those models, these shoes just don't seem to have the same hype, and for that reason, I'm giving these shoes a sit. Rounding off the 19th, we've got the Social Status Nike Air Penny 2 in Cobalt Pulse and Black. First of all, I want to give a huge thank you to Social Status for sending out this pair of sneakers early. I absolutely love it. It's actually my only pair of Nike Air Penny 2s, and this colorway is fire. There is actually a second colorway, which I believe dropped exclusively at Social Status. It's a white and cream colorway. It's also very clean, but I think I prefer this black, white, and blue look personally. Obviously, because this is a Social Status collab, you do have some Social Status hits, like this embroidery right here on the ankle, which is actually embroidered onto this. 3M detail, which I really dig. You've got this nice pink hit on the back of the shoe, and then of course, a majority of the shoe comes in this black nubuck accented by this white sort of phylon. Another detail that I really love is that with the shoe, you get this little like bronze keychain of the shoe, which is super, super cool, which I think I might actually throw onto my keychain right now. I mean, that's sick. That is super, super cool. I love this detail. Definitely a super clean collaboration on a classic silhouette and one that absolutely will sell out. In fact, I think the shoe is reselling for like triple the price right now, which is nuts. Moving on to October 21st, we've got the follow-up to the wildly popular Puma MB1, aptly named the Puma MB2. This shoe, of course, is Mellow Ball's second signature sneaker with Puma and is actually one of their most popular silhouettes. At least, the first one was. I wouldn't be surprised if the second one is also incredibly popular. Overall, the shape of the silhouette is very similar to that of the MB1s, and it seems like they're using a lot of the same materials, but what I really like about this shoe is that they've changed the details on the side of the shoe, or I guess the fuse overlays that form the details on the side of the shoe to a much more fire inspired look. I mean, I guess they were trying to say that this shoe is literally fire, which it really is. And especially in this initial orange and yellow colorway, it definitely imbues the fire look. I don't know if I use that word correctly, but it seems like I did. Is imbues? imbued, permeated, or inspired. That makes sense. <laughs> okay, so I used it right, I just said it wrong. Regardless, this shoe will no doubt be popular, and I definitely think this Puma MB1 in this orange colorway will absolutely sell out. Also dropping on the 21st, we've got the Nike Air More Up Tempo 96 Thank You Wilson. So this shoe pays homage to Wilson Smith III, the first black designer in the footwear industry. And the colorway of this shoe is inspired by his love of space age TV. Apparently it's supposed to be some sort of like otherworldly sunset, which I actually kind of dig. Not only that, the mesh uppers used on the shoe are inspired by one of his early mesh upper prototypes of the Nike Air More Up Tempo. The story alone, and of course the person that it honors makes this shoe awesome, but I just don't feel like there's a lot of hype behind this release. Probably 
probably because people don't understand the inspiration behind this shoe. And for that reason, unfortunately, I'm gonna give this shoe a sit. Next up, we've got the Shelf Life Air Jordan 2 Low. As some of you probably could have guessed from the name of this collaboration, this shoe is a collaboration between the South African sneaker and streetwear store Shelf Life and of course Jordan brand. This shoe comes in a very clean white cream and orange makeup. It features this really nice white suede around the lace eyelets of the shoe. You've got white leather rounding off the rest of the upper and you've got cream hits on the heel, the midsole, and of course orange on the tongue and on the outsole. As I'm sure you've noticed if you've been following sneakers over the last year, Jordan brand has really been making a push to re revitalize the Air Jordan 2, and this shoe is actually one of the three collaborations dropping on the 21st. Apparently the idea behind releasing these three different Air Jordan 2 low collaborations, the other two of course we'll talk about in a minute, is to amplify the local stories of where these sneaker stores who are having these collaborations are based. And while traditionally the Air Jordan 2 silhouette and especially the Air Jordan 2 low have not been that popular when compared to other Air Jordan models, I definitely think this collaboration and probably the other two that we'll talk about will sell out. The next one of these shoes from this collaboration is the 218 Air Jordan 2 Low. Now like Shelf Life, 218 is a sneaker and streetwear store, except this time around this store is based in Detroit. This shoe comes in a very dressy brown tonal upper made up of leathers and suede, accented by a cream colored midsole and a semi-translucent outsole that fades from a blue to a brown. Definitely a clean look and in my opinion a great addition to this set of Air Jordan 2 Low collaborations. And I have to say that not only because this shoe looks good, but also because it's limited and of course a collaboration. I I do think that this shoe will sell out. And then finally, we've got the third sneaker from this set of collaborations, and that's the Titan Women's Air Jordan 2. This shoe is a collaboration with the Filipino sneaker boutique Titan, and unlike the other two shoes that we just talked about, this shoe is made exclusively for women. Now personally, that's a little bit disappointing because this was my favorite colorway out of the three that are dropping, and while yes, I probably can still grab a pair of these in my size, there's gonna be a lot less pairs of size nines than there are like size sixes, so it's probably going to be very difficult to get. This colorway comes in white leather, orange, and green, accented by this really cool sort of green corduroy mudguard, which I really dig. And overall, in my opinion, it's the most unique of these three Air Jordan 2s. And like I just said about the other two shoes that we just talked about, I definitely think this shoe will be no different and will absolutely sell out. Next up, also dropping on the 21st, we've got the Adidas Yeezy 450 Stone Flex. <sighs> Man, Kanye is doing some some stuff right now. Um, and in light of all that stuff, I'm surprised that Adidas is still releasing his shoes. I mean, even disregarding the crazy stuff that just went down last week, just the contract negotiations, it's, uh, it's interesting to me that they're still dropping models or colorways of this shoe, which they must have produced months ago or even a year ago, and they probably have to release these shoes. But man, it's 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 been a wild uh, it's been a wild couple of weeks. With that being said, the 450 is still a pretty popular model. I like this sort of caramel colorway. It's nice. I like the monochromatic look. But overall, it's not something that I really feel like I need to pick up. And I think that the 450s, while still popular, have lost a lot of their hype. And for that reason, I kind of think this shoe will probably sit on shelves. After that, and rounding off October 21st, we've got two different colorways of Joe Fresh Goods latest collaboration on the New Balance 993s. So although this shoe does come in three different colorways, it looks like New Balance's website is only dropping two of those colorways, the blue colorway and the margarita colorway, which is kind of like a pale green. Now you guys know how much I love Joe Fresh Goods New Balance collaborations. This shoe is, in my opinion, one of the best New Balances ever released, but he's also dropped a lot of other great colorways, a lot of which I have, and uh, I'm excited to try and grab these colorways as well. However, knowing the Joe Fresh Goods collaborations, they will be very difficult to get. My favorite of the two colorways is the blue vintage rose colorway. I really love that light blue nubuck that they used on the upper of these 993s. I also love that sort of rose colored cream that they use to accent the upper as well as on the midsole. It's a very clean look, but don't get me wrong, I'd also be happy with the margarita colorway, which features the same sort of vintage rose accent, but also comes in this really nice sort of toned down green upper. I just love both of these shoes. I would love to get the third colorway as well, but just knowing Joe Fresh Goods New Balance collaborations, these shoes will absolutely sell out and sell out very, very quickly. Continuing on to October 22nd, we've got Salehi Bembry's latest collaboration with Crocs on the Pollux Clogs in the Kawada colorway. I'm not really sure how to describe this colorway. It's kind of like a clay color with a bit more like pink in it. Maybe sort of like a, uh, a Kawada. I don't know what a Kawada is, but I feel like it's probably similar color to that. Could be a Japanese surname or an anime character. Either way, I think it's a nice looking shoe. It's actually kind of similar color to this guy's hair. Maybe that's what it what it is. I don't know. If you guys know, let me know in the comment section down below. But I think it's a very clean looking pair of shoes. I love this colorway. I love all of Salehi Bembury's Crocs. And if I have a chance to grab these, I absolutely will. But knowing all of the other releases he's done, I definitely think these shoes will sell out. 
Also dropping on October 22nd, we've got the Nike Dunk Low Florida A&M University. So this shoe comes in the Florida A&M colors. You've got a white leather upper accented by bright orange on the overlays, as well as green on the outsole and on some of the accents. The shoe features the rattlesnake logo on the tongue, which I'm assuming is the mascot of Florida A&M University. I, I honestly don't know. I don't really know anything about this university, so let me know if I'm right in the comment section down below, as well as 1887 embroidered on the heel, which I, again, I'm assuming that that is the year that the university was founded. All in all, it's a pretty clean looking shoe. However, I do feel like there's a lot of Florida A&M University touches all over the sneakers. So if you're not a fan of Florida A&M University, you didn't go to the school or you just, you're like me and you don't even know what it is, then uh, I mean, maybe let this one go, but hey, it's still a Nike Dunk Low. It does have that bright orange and green color blocking, which I do really like. And for that reason, I do think this shoe will probably sell out. And then rounding off October 22nd, we've got the Air Jordan 7 Vachetta Tan. This Air Jordan 7 comes in a full Vachetta Tan leather upper accented by embossed details that mimic the classic Bin 23 Air Jordan 7. Accenting the tan upper is a black midsole with purple and yellow hits. And overall, it is a pretty clean looking pair of Air Jordan 7s. Now I gotta be honest, I don't totally trust Jordan brand when they say this is actual Vachetta Tan leather. Usually that leather darkens over time after a lot of wear. I feel like this is a much cheaper, crappier version of that leather if it is that leather at all and I think there is a good chance that this leather will just stay the same color no matter how long you wear the shoe so I don't know maybe I'm wrong about that that's just what I'm guessing from these images but overall it's a clean look it's definitely a simple look with some nice accent details on the heel it's just not a shoe that I'm that interested in and I do think it will probably end up sitting on shelves Next up, on October 25th, we've got the Nike LeBron 2 Midnight Navy. So this shoe is apparently a one-for-one -one retro of the classic Nike LeBron 2 in the Midnight Navy colorway. The shoe comes in a dark navy mesh upper accented by white leather overlays and is a pretty clean looking Nike LeBron 2. I'm not the biggest fan of the LeBron 2 personally, I know I've said that about some other shoes on the list, but I don't have much nostalgia towards this shoe because I was never really a big LeBron fan. I definitely respect his game, I love what he does, I think he's an incredible player, but honestly when I was growing up I was more focused on AI. So this is not something that I'm personally nostalgic for, but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are. However, I don't think the hype is there for these LeBron retros, and for that reason, I do think this shoe will probably end up sitting. Moving on to October 26th, we've got the Nike Dunk High Somos Familia Dia de Muertos. This Day of the Dead Nike Dunk High features a split fabric upper, one side is brown, one side is blue, and each one of these sides feature really cool embroidered details. The overlays on this shoe come in this really nice warm yellow color accented by a red Nike swoosh. Overall, a pretty clean shoe and one of my favorite Day of the Dead Nike sneakers, and I definitely think this shoe will be popular, and for that reason, I think this shoe will sell out. Next up, on October 27th, we've got three new sneakers from the Teddy Santis New Balance 990 collection. So this collection is made up of a pair of 990 V1s, 990 V2s, and of course the 990 V3s. The upper of each one of these shoes are all pretty similar. They all feature white mesh somewhere on the upper, as well as a dark brown suede, and they all feature a little tan hit on the heel. I don't know if these colorways are my favorite out of all of the colorways that he's dropped, but they're definitely a clean look. However, I feel like some of the hype has died down from these made in the USA pairs, and for that reason, although they are great sneakers, I think they all probably will sit in some sizes. Also dropping on the 27th, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 1 Starfish. This shoe looks a lot like the Shattered Backboard 2.0s. It's a very similar looking sneaker, however there are some small changes and it's not just the fact that it's a women's only sneaker. The upper of the shoe comes in a white leather accented by bright orange overlays which look very clean and again are very similar to the Shattered Backboard 2.0s. However, the difference comes around the ankle area of the shoe. Instead of using black leather, they decided to go with brown leather, probably to differentiate the shoe from the Shattered Backboards, but it definitely gives the shoe a more fall-like sort of Halloween feel. Obviously, I think most people would prefer to have the ankle area come in a black leather instead of a brown leather because we're probably all hype beasts, but at the same time, this brown is definitely not a bad look, but I don't think it's going to be as hyped up as a re-release of the Shattered Backboard 2.0s would have been. It's a clean look, it's a great sneaker, however, it is unfortunate that it's only dropping in women's sizes. That being said, it will probably still sell out. And then, finally rounding off the 27th, we've got the Nike Dunk Low Halloween. It's crazy to think that the Mummy Dunks already came out last year. It feels like it just happened, but it was a whole year ago, and now we're getting a brand new Halloween sneaker from Nike, the Nike Dunk Low Halloween. Unlike the Mummy Dunks, it featured a cream mummified upper. This time around, Nike decided to go for a slightly darker look with a very dark gray and actually reflective upper. In addition to the reflective details on the gray upper, you've also got a bright green outsole, which seems like it features some recycled materials in it because it's kind of speckled. 
It might not, but it kind of looks like that's what they're going for. All in all, it's not a bad looking shoe, and I feel like there's a lot of cool hidden details that we just don't see in these promo images for this shoe, which we'll have to wait till we get the shoe in hand, but overall, in my opinion, it's not as cool as the Mummy Dunks, and I realize that's probably one of the best Halloween sneakers to ever release, but that being said, I still feel like they could have followed up the Mummy Dunks with another crazy release and not something as toned down as this shoe. But hey, I still think these shoes will sell out. Following that up, on October 29th, we've got the Air Jordan 4 Midnight Navy. So this shoe's color blocking probably reminds a lot of people of the white cement 4s. In my opinion, one of the best Air Jordan 4s of all time. And I've gotta say, while yes, I would've preferred having the white cements come back, this is actually a pretty fire shoe. The upper of this shoe comes in white leather, accented by gray details with black splatter print, and of course you've got the Midnight Navy details on the eyelets and on the outsole. According to the sneakers app, this shoe is actually the white cement colorway, except with a, an autumn update with a crisp Midnight Navy accent to keep you looking sharp and season ready. I don't know how this blue is more autumn than the gray that they were using or the black that they were using, but hey, that's what they're saying, so I mean, it's a white cement with blue hits. There you go. Again, I'm not gonna lie, this is a fire sneaker, one that I absolutely wanna pick up, and one that I think a lot of people are excited for, and for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. Then, finally getting to the last release in today's video, on Halloween, October 31st, we've got the Adidas Yeezy Basketball Knit in Onyx. I don't really have much to say about this shoe other than the fact that it's an all-black Yeezy Basketball Knit with 3M accents on the toe. It's fine, nothing wrong with it, but not that exciting. I guess it's kind of Halloween themed because it's all black. I don't know. Either way, I don't think this shoe will sell out, so for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Let me know your thoughts on all the sneakers that we covered in today's video in the comment section down below, and I'll see you all in the next one.